Well, if Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs the state's don't say gay bill, the law would soon take effect this summer, in fact. But no one quite knows the full extent of what would happen, and that might be the point. Joining me now are two members of the Q Law Association of Seattle, Dana Savage and Jeremy Walker. Thanks to you both for Thank being you. here. Thank you. So we've heard a lot about this bill being called Don't Say Gay. What would it actually do? So that is an interesting question because the bill is very intentionally written to be vague. Mm. Um, what it would uh, do is ban in K through three education uh, the discussion of any kind of LGBTQ plus identities with children, mm -hmm. and then as children uh, go into the further grades, it would make it so that the schools are not allowed to discuss anything that would be deemed inappropriate with respect to gender identity. Um, or sexuality, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, if a child expresses any sort of, um, I guess, like leanings towards being queer of any kind, then it would require the teacher to report it to them, uh, to the parents. And so it's basically like a forcible outing of children wow. in the bills, and yeah. Mm -hmm. And that could be very dangerous for a child who is struggling with their own sexuality. They may not have a safe in environment for them to, you know, grow up in, you know, to go home to. Mm -hmm. um, and that could lead to all sorts of yeah. issues. Scary. Yes. Scary, scary yes. things. You mentioned it was written vague on purpose from a legal standpoint. Why would that be done? It would be done that way uh, specifically to try and survive uh, any kind of challenges in the Supreme Court. This has been a new trend that we are seeing across um, conservative lawmaking circles where mm -hmm. rather than writing bills that specifically outlaw or um, criminalize certain behavior, they make it so that folks can interpret it all wishy-washy and when you go into conservative uh, areas where there's uh, control there, that means they get carte blanche authority to interpret it. Another thing that's really vague about this bill that um, uh, I forgot to mention is it also allows students to sue schools that provide their kid with inappropriate education. So it's another take on the bounty system that we're seeing right. like out of Texas. So this would mean teachers could be attacked yes. possibly for teaching yes. anything that has yes. to do yes. with being gay. Well, the school would get attacked, but yeah, by, by extension. The teacher. Yes, yes. Um, Jeremy, you grew up in the South as a gay young man. How would a law like this have impacted your experience? Sure. Um, so I actually didn't come to terms with my sexuality until I was older. Mm -hmm. um, but imagine growing up in, in an environment where it's not okay for you to be you. You know, fortunately, I had the opportunity to move away, you know, and grow into to myself. Mm -hmm. For these children, they can't do that. So that could be incredibly damaging to the growing up into the person that you should be. Mm -hmm. Well, that was just, you know, a, a topic we talked about earlier. If you don't know, if no one's talking about this, how do you know if you are okay, if you're normal? And without that, mm -hmm. you can really get into some dangerous territory, right? Definitely. Definitely. Um, what do you expect to see on this from, like, challenges, legal challenges, mm -hmm. that standpoint? Um, well, it's going to depend on how it is enforced, ultimately, if it does get signed into law. Um, if it is being used the way that the lawmakers and Governor DeSantis are uh, purporting it's going to be, because uh, again, it's very neutral language, mm -hmm. um, then we are, we are going to see challenges by folks like the ACLU. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of Title IX violations for sex discrimination, and I think our state Supreme Court, not our state, sorry, our national Supreme Court mm -hmm. has been very clear, um, at least in this realm, that they consider gender identity and sexuality to uh, consist of sexual discrimination. Mm -hmm. And so I would expect that if it's being used in that way that they can find a discriminatory effect or purpose in, in writing it. But until that point, families are gonna suffer. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, you know, what, what's gonna happen when you've got um, children that are, are you know, of a queer family, that they have two moms or two dads or right. one parent is trans, can they not talk about that, their family in class while everyone else is sharing what, they're, what they're, they did over summer break? And so, in, in general, it's going to have a very chilling and silencing effect until it gets sorted out. Until it gets sorted out. But let's talk about the argument on mm -hmm. the other side. They say this is about empowering parents um, and them having a say in the education. How is that argument either strong or flawed? I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. um, school does teach you some things, but a lot of education happens at home. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's about empowering the parents. 
I really think it's about trying to uh, delegitimize one group, mm -hmm. trying to say, okay, we're going to talk about these things, but not, not this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's discriminatory in its effect. Are you seeing any national trends in this area? I mean, I know you all are watching this mm -hmm. with Q-Law. Yes, uh, not only in this bill, but for instance, in Idaho, they're trying to criminalize the um, treatment of transgender um, youths, and especially, you know, in my day job, which I'm here as president of Q-Law, but my day job, I, I work at the Attorney General's office in child protection. So when I see things of, of, of this caliber, it just all of my uh, wheels start turning alarms going off where, um, how how can a, a, a government decide what's best for children, decide what's best for an individual family on such a systemic level? And the answer is they can't, but they're going to try anyways. And uh, so Idaho is, is trying to uh, um, get rid of any kind of gender affirming treatment for trans children. Um, you know, uh, Texas, they just recently got stopped from doing that um, with that executive order, uh, which, you know, there's the injunction in place. But mm -hmm. we don't know if that's going to get struck down or not right. as it goes through the courts. And it may be the same thing that happened with uh, the, the Supreme Court with the, um, the abortion bill, the heartbeat bill, mm -hmm. where uh, they're just going to decline to rule on it unless and until something gets to them on the merits at the very end. And so we may find ourselves in a situation where if any one of these survives, like the heartbeat bill did, then you're going to see just a whole um, a bunch of states running the, running the gamut of these bills. Okay. We only have about 30 seconds left. What can organizations or what can anyone do um, that want to take action or, or let their voice be heard? I would say don't be a silent ally. This is a time to be vocal. This is a time to donate to various organizations. Um, yeah, just like stay involved, stay aware. I, I think that's the, the, the best way. And we thank you so much thank for you. coming on the show to help others be aware. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you for spending time with us today. You can check our website always for more content. And you can always send us an email and share your thoughts. Go out and enjoy your new day. We'll see you next time.